Hi, my name is Sam, and in this demo, I'm going to show you how you can use a USB X series multifunction DAC device to perform counter input and counter output. These are multifunction devices, which means that they have analog, digital, and counter circuitry in them. Uh, but this demo, we're going to focus on the counters. So let's move over to the hardware setup. What I have connected to my X series device is a rotary quadrature encoder. And this is connected to counter zero, and we're going to be able to read the angular position. For our counter output, we have counter one wired back in to an analog input, and we're simply going to be reading the pulses that we generate there. So pulses that you generate from a counter are frequently used for servo motors, and you can modify the duty cycle to determine how quickly the motor is rotating. So let's start by doing the counter input, and I'll show you how to do it in lab view. So I already have a VI open, so I'm going to go to the block diagram, right-click, input, and bring up the DAC assistant. So we're going to do acquire signals. This is a counter input. And I'm going to select position and angular for our quadrature encoder. So this quadrature encoder is connected to counter zero, so we'll select that and click finish. So now in this configuration screen, I can enter the parameters for this quadrature encoder. I happen to know that it's 360 pulses per revolution spinning. And everything else looks good, so I'll click OK. So the DAC assistant is going to script some code, and it's going to ask if I want this to be in a while loop, which I do. And now I just want a way to visualize this on the front panel. So I'm going to go to the graph palette and select a waveform chart so that I can view the values over time. Back on the block diagram, I'll wire the data output of the DAC assistant into the waveform chart. And then finally, I'll configure the waveform chart on my front panel to go from 0 to 360 degrees. Everything looks good, so I'll run this. And now you'll see that as I rotate my quadrature encoder, I can see both the current and the historical values of it on my waveform chart. So that's how you measure counters with X-Series. Let me show you how you can generate some counter outputs. So I'll stop this, and I'm going to uh, close this VI, and won't save it. And what I have here is another VI that's already running, which is measuring my analog input channel 0. So now I'll create a new VI. which is going to use the DAC assistant to generate a pulse train on my counter one, which will then be measured back in with analog input zero. So again, I'll go to the block diagram, right click and select output, DAC assistant, and place it down. I'll select generate signals, counter output, and then pulse output. We're generating from counter one, so I'll click finish. And in here, I can set the high time and low time. So this corresponds to what percent of the time or the duty cycle that, that this pulse train is high versus being low. So this looks good. I'll have this be continuous. And I'll click OK. So the DAC assistant gives us a basic level of control for counter outputs. Uh, if you're looking to do more advanced things, like modify the duty cycle as the program's running, we have uh, several examples that are included with LabVIEW, and you can find them in the example finder. So LabVIEW is asking me here if I want to loop around this code, which I do, because it's going to uh, run continuously. And there's nothing else I need to do except uh, run the application. And what you can see are the pulses being generated by the counter and being read back in by analog input zero. And as soon as I stop this application here, generating the pulses, you'll see that my analog input goes back to zero, just a flat line. And so there you have it. A really easy way to measure counter inputs and generate pulses with USB X series and LabVIEW.